Okay, well, thank you. I um, guess y'all didn't realize you were coming to class today. So if you have to go to the bathroom, raise your hand and we'll get you a hall pass and you can go out later. Um, thanks for coming this morning. Um, how many of you guys use social media? How many of you use Twitter? So most of you are pretty familiar with this. Well, then I might bore you. But if I do, that's life. Um, we are recording this session so that if anybody wants to go back later and review the information, you can. If you'd like to share it with somebody else, you can do that as well. Um, I will share right now, I do have a blog site right here, craigstechblog.wordpress.com. This has links to various things I've, that I've mentioned, that I'll be mentioning in this, other links to presentations I've done over the past year, videos that I've done, we'll have screencasts, we've got all sorts of stuff up there. So when this session is over, just go to craigstechblog.wordpress.com, okay? If you have any questions during the session today, feel free to ask. Wayne, I'm going to limit you to one every 15 minutes, so you have four. If we get into this and you say, hey, I already know this stuff, if you get up and leave, that's fine. You're here to learn. You're not here to be polite and be bored, okay? So with that, we'll get this thing going. First, some numbers. I don't know if you're aware of all these numbers. The one that really stands out to me, 750 tweets per second. There, we've just had 1,500 tweets go out, and y'all didn't even know it. Another one, how many of you community college are here? Most of your post-secondary? Look at this age demographic right here, 18 to 34. That's pretty much your demographic at a community college. Either the ones coming straight out of high school or the ones coming back for retraining. They're gonna be using this. 55% are female. You can reach a lot of non-traditional students using this. 150, 175 million tweets on a busy day, but look at this, one million new users every day. Who does not have a Twitter account in here? You will by the end of the day, okay? You'll be one of the mil one million. So that's, those are some pretty staggering numbers and that, these numbers were pulled together the middle of 2012. So, of course, you know, being the age of instant gratification, six months ago, it's probably five million users a day. Teachers, most teachers don't use Twitter. Why? Don't know how to use it? Oh, they use Facebook, they use YouTube. You're going to, we're going to talk about ways you can put all of these in together and use them together. LinkedIn is more of a professional one. 
And I don't know, I don't like wikis because it's just, it's too crazy and too hard to handle. But like it says right here, every social network can play a pivotal role and each one of them can play a different role in education. Facebook, you're gonna put long articles up there for people to read. You're gonna put all sorts of, of photos for them to look at and videos for them to look at. But you're also gonna let people who, are not, who don't even know you come in and have the ability to write things on your wall. Hey, look at this picture of Craig. Did you know you saw him when he was dancing? You click on it, oh, I'm sorry, you just got yourself a virus. You know, call the, the medical doctor to come and fix your computer. You don't want to do that. It happens in Twitter too, but it's more prevalent in, in Facebook. With Facebook, people can, they're starting to tighten up the security now, but people have the ability to go in and send you private messages, even if you don't know them and even if you're not their friend, which I don't like too much. And Facebook is the Microsoft of social media. They change their stuff, it seems like, every day. Uh, they introduced a graph search in January, and yesterday they said they're going to change how your news feed looks. Which, I'm just going to go back on strike against them. But that's okay. I'm sending you a couple of links here you can look at some very cool facts and some stats about this. You'll be able to go back and look at this once we get the stuff up after the presentation today. It gives you some numbers to go into your administrators if they say, well, we don't really like Twitter because we don't understand it. This information will show you how fast it's growing. It also references how many people are using smartphones, how many people are using tablets, how fast it, how long it took people to get to a certain benchmark on smartphones and how it's going to pass that many in tablets within two years instead of 10 years. This is a list of eight things that every student uses. That this, this is their list of the most important items. A computer. Everybody needs a computer because smartphones and tablets don't necessarily get the job done. You know, with a, with a smartphone, if you're old like me, you can't see it. You get a tablet, that's fine, it's bigger, but you can only have one screen on a time because it's just a smartphone on steroids. Smartphone, well, uh, there's a couple of seats there. Y'all just come on in, we're having a good time here. Everybody uses a smart, does anybody in here not have a smartphone? You don't have a smartphone. Well, that's a smartphone on steroids, but that's okay. If you just got a flip phone, you can still use that to do social media. Did you know that? Now you do. Noise canceling headphones because they're always listening to music or whatever. External hard drive, e-reader, the alarm clock, who cares. Small secure lockable steel box, that's so they can carry all their content with them in the event of an emergency. And of course, a headset and a microphone. Skype is very big, FaceTime, things like that, so you can communicate, okay? And I do also reference, at the bottom, you'll be able to go in and look at the full article where this came from. And also it keeps me from going to jail for copyright infringement. Okay, so, these are some ways that you can use your social media in your business. How many of you are teachers? How many are administrators? How many are workforce? How many just raised your hand because you wanted to stretch? That was me. You can take these things and work it to fit what you want, okay? Information is very important. If you're watching a Twitter feed, people are just jabbering about things. They don't get much play, they don't get much mention. If you put a link in your Twitter feed, somebody's gonna pick it up and read it because they're gonna say, hey, this is not just somebody telling me what they had for breakfast this morning, okay? <laughs> That's important. There's some other things I'll show you in here that because you've got a link in there, it's gonna be picked up and be used for something else. 
It enhances your posts. I can sit there, and I, I do technical support for Blackboard at the RCU, and people will call up and say, I can't log into Blackboard. None of y'all have had that problem, I'm sure. That's like, you know, calling up a doctor over the phone saying, doctor, it hurts. Okay, if you're saying something about, I've got this great class going on, if you put a picture of it up there, if you put video, if you put an audio podcast and link to that, they're going to go see it and listen to it and probably going to become a follower of you, more so than if you just say, hey, we've got some great stuff happening at Jones Community College, Jones Junior College, I'm sorry. Demonstrate things. The teachers, you can just do all these sorts of demonstrations and again, put them out there. Promote your school or class. And here's the big thing. We're in Mississippi. I'm in Starkville, Mississippi. I have got followers and people retweeting me from Utah, Washington State, Boston, Germany, different things. You become an expert in your field because you're putting content out there. It also helps if you're a teacher because you can put additional things for your students to go through and see. If you're on the secondary level, then their, their parents can see it as well and know what they're learning. Anybody have anything you want to add to this or any questions or comments on this? Celeste, nothing? Okay. <laughs> Celeste is from Colin. She's going to keep me straight. Yes, ma'am. Um, on the bottom one, I'm a sponsor for a gospel music uh, volunteer group at our community college, and I, I'm using Facebook because I couldn't figure out how to use anything else. But that's how we want our students, if we're having practice or if we're going to go a little earlier. You know, my students are putting pressure on me right now. They want to record, they want to post on there, and I'm a little nervous because of copyright issues. But uh, if you've got a student group, you've got to put something on social media. Well, that, that's true. Thank you for that, Margie. You've got to use social media. We've got some things in here we're going to show. And some of you have been in some of my sessions. I've seen some of the... Somebody didn't wake up yet this morning, but they just did with that cold ice water. Uh, some of these tools and some of these items you've seen before, some you may not have seen before, we can move through this as you as you need to, but we've got some things that answer your question, Mark. How you can go in and use Twitter and Facebook, and you can use text messaging to get information out to whatever group needs what. Okay, the, the one thing about Twitter that's bad, in my opinion, is it is not timely. You've been in here now for ten minutes. I know it seems like an hour, but it's only been ten minutes. In that 10 minutes, do you know how many tweets have gone by? Do you know how many tweets that you are following have gone by? I don't either, but I just was wondering if y'all knew. But it's a lot. It's just zipping through there. Okay, if you have any kind of an emergency, when Hurricane Sandy came through, if you were trying to keep up with our Hurricane Isaac, let's, let's get it closer to home. The hashtag Isaac was being used. If you had set up a Twitter feed to follow all the information about Isaac, it was a speed reading test because it was just flying through there. It's not timely. And so if you're at work for an eight hour day, you may or may not see this stuff. But again, we've, I'm gonna show you some things here, how you can use this to create newspapers, you can use uh, text messaging systems, you can put out videos, all sorts of things, okay? Questions? Comments? Anybody else want to spill some water before we get started? Just to, you know, feel right at home? Okay. First thing I'm going to talk about is a product called TweetDeck. How many of you have heard of TweetDeck? Okay, that kills the second question, which was going to be how many of you use TweetDeck? Ooh, two knew about it, one uses it. That's not good. TweetDeck is an application that you can download to Mac or PC or you can use it on the web. What it does is it allows you to post to multiple Twitter accounts, a single Facebook account, a LinkedIn account. You can schedule 
tweets to go out at a specific time. You can use it as a real-time search engine for what's going on on Twitter. I know you say, what, is he just going to sit there and talk about that, have a black screen and white words, and he's just going to talk? Would that bore you if I did that? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, okay, fine. We'll just go to the, to the board then. Tweet deck. I'm going to use the web interface. As you can see, I've got multiple columns here. If you're using just Twitter.com, you've got one column you're looking at. What I can do is I can go in and build up different columns. The inbox is what is sent directly to me through direct messages. I can have timelines for whichever accounts I want to follow. I can have an interactive line to see who's joining me, who's retweeting me, different things like that. I can use this as a real-time search engine. Okay? If you're looking for a term on, uh, and I don't know if we can get this to happen for Canvas. Okay, there's in Structure Canvas. Now what I can do is, where's my column? Timeline. And then what I can do is I can create a column that just references anything with Instructure Canvas in it. Now why these people, these, okay, these are retweeted by Canvas or it mentions Canvas in here somewhere. But you can add this column and now anytime somebody mentions something about Canvas, it's going to pop up here. The good thing about this is you can use this to do real-time research. You can use it when you tweet things out about whatever class or whatever your job is, workforce. If you've got some kind of a new training coming up, a new training course, you can put a uh, new training course on MIG welding, hashtag SMCC. And so then anybody that goes and looks for the hashtag SMCC will pull your content up. Now, at the same time, when you get ready to tweet something out, you'll notice it's got a place for a camera. This is where you get your media back in social media. You look at these people over here, and there's a link there, but no picture. Link there, but no picture. Everything is strictly a link. The link is going to make you, make you want to watch and look at it more so than just saying, you know, the top 10 interview questions. If there's not a link there, I'm not going to pay attention to it. But what you can do is simply add a picture and actually I'm going to do at hashtag creating futures through technology when I send that out, it's going to upload the picture and somebody can come in and look and see what you've got. The good thing about that, and there it is, somebody can go right there and see the picture. If they are at this conference and they are following that hashtag, they'll say, oh, this is the class that I'm in. I want to go see this. It looks like they're having fun. They're sleeping. So they can see that, which is a lot better than just saying, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're in this class and they're talking about stuff. You can put videos. You can put pictures. If you use a smartphone, you can actually tweet it out from there. Twit pick, different things. You know what? I'm going to take a picture right now. I won't send it out because that would take time. But I'm going to take a picture of all of y'all. Y'all didn't know this was going to be participative, did you? Okay, there's one. I hear somebody's phone hard at work over there. But when I send this out in a little bit, I'll put it up on my timeline. And it'll just start showing where we are. Yes, sir? Can you delete pictures or will they be there forever? Good question. Can you delete the pictures? <laughs> Depends on what you are using. If you use something like TwitPic, you can go in and delete it. If you're using Twitter, eh, not so much because Twitter, 
everything, and it's a good, good thing to mention right now, the Library of Congress is in the process of cataloging and saving every tweet that has ever been posted since inception. How many of you have tweeted? Congratulations, you're in the Library of Congress now. Hope that you tweeted out something that was worthy of it. Because I know some of my first tweets were like, testing Twitter, one, two, three. So in a hundred years, somebody's going back and say, boy, this guy was a mental giant back here. But yes, you can delete your pictures, you can delete your videos. If you want to be sure you can do that, you may want to take your pictures and put them on a site like Flickr or Google Picasa, uh, their website, so you can just take them down at any point in time. And you don't have to worry about uh, TwitPic or Twitter actually letting you delete them. Instagram is another one that we'll talk about where you can take a picture and you can upload it. Instagram, not a big fan of. What we're talking about, not a big fan of. Snapchat, stay away from it. That's, that's my opinion, stay away from it. That's a very, very dangerous application. You can sit there and take a picture, send it out to an individual or a group of individuals, and have it stay online for anywhere from three seconds to 10 seconds. Okay? That sounds harmless enough. But if you happen to take a picture when you're somewhere you're not supposed to be, you're at a ball game instead of at a conference, and you send that out, and somebody sees it, if it's up there for 10 seconds and you're saying, hi, mom, look at me, you're working, I'm not, they'll screen capture that. It disappears after 10 seconds, it self-deletes, but you can still get caught because somebody can screen capture it. It leads to a lot of dangerous situations for people doing things that they shouldn't do. I would stay away from Snapchat. Instagram, what they will do with Instagram is you'll take a picture and they'll put all sorts of filters on it to make it look cute. <sighs> Ruins the picture to me. I would just soon take the picture and then if I want to change something later, I can. Um, that's, that's basically TweetDeck. You can schedule things by simply going here, picking the date and the time that you want to put it out. You can choose multiple email account, multiple Twitter accounts if you want to. You can have a Facebook account and everything. You can put it and you can go. I could put something out here right now and say, post it tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I can drop dead today. 10 o'clock in the morning, it's like I'm coming from the other side because it's scheduled and it goes out. So that's good if you're really busy, if you can sit down on a Monday morning and you want to say, I'm going to tweet out, I've got a class that starts this afternoon, I've got one that goes Wednesday, I've got two on Thursday, let me go ahead and get these things scheduled to go out. So again, it's timely, but you don't have to do it that particular day. Okay? Questions? YouTube. How many of you use YouTube? How many of you are using it to its maximum potential? Okay, I can hear it. You mean there's a maximum potential? Yeah, there is. With YouTube, what you can do is you can create your own channel now. Okay? You can give it a name. So it could be uh, Meridian Community College Workforce. It could be anything you'd like. A lot of times you're sitting there saying, okay, I see this presentation, but I don't know anything about it. I don't know who it's from or where it's from. Or somebody steals it. What you can do is you can actually go in and brand this. How many of you hate watching TV because they always keep bringing up the Discovery Channel logo at the bottom or something? You, you hate that too, huh? You can do that with your YouTube. You can put your community college logo up there. You can brand it however you need to. You can let people comment on this. You can go over by clicking on the viewers here. You can set it to private or whatever you'd like. I can see on this one I've had nine viewers. I can look at the stats on this and I can see what is and is not being helpful. If you're putting content up there, if you're a teacher and you're putting screencasts up on how to do something, if you've got 75 views of that screencast, 
it's either useful or it's got a really intriguing name that people are just finding it and wanting to see what it is. Either way you're getting views. If it's been up and you've got one view, you might want to take it down. Also, number of minutes watched, how many people have subscribed to this? The more people you get subscribed to this, that's another avenue for you to get people, get information to people. Well, I talked about the maximum potential. How many of you have the ability to do a YouTube video that's longer than 15 minutes? How many of you have YouTube accounts? Do you know why you have not got the maximum potential to do more than 15 minute videos? You didn't verify it. Um, okay. You got to verify that yes, I'm a real person. And as soon as you do that, you can put a three second video up, <laughs> verify it, and then you can start putting two hour videos up. You just have to verify that you're real. A lot of people don't take time to do that. But this is a great way because what you can also do when you look at this, I'm sorry, I have to remember that I'm using a laptop instead of a tablet because I was looking for the back button to push. But if I wanted to go in and share this with somebody, I find a video, you'll see down here, bless you, you'll see down here where you can share it. And there you go. As you can see, there's a link that you can share. So you can send that out to somebody via email. Or you can share it with Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus. All from one location. When you start about talking about Twitter, you send it to Twitter and post it there. You can send it out via text message then with another application. You can put it out in a newspaper that's self-generated every day. So now, using you know, one of these tools, you're starting to reach more people. <coughs> yes, ma'am. Is uh, TweetDeck on that? Is the, the icon for TweetDeck? No, TweetDeck, TweetDeck is just a, a client like, like Microsoft Word or something like that. But, you're, but, that, but all you've got to do is, if you tweet it right out here, it'll go out through your regular Twitter account. Or if you just want to share the link here, you can copy that and go in and put, hey, this is a great thing, and you can do multiple Twitter feeds. This one's only going to let you go to one Twitter feed. And that's what I like about TweetDeck, is I've got a friend who has a, a, an online marketing business. He's got about 400 Twitter accounts, and he'll want to send things out to about 15 or 20 of them at once. If you just go to the twitter.com site, you're doing them one at a time. It's long and drawn out. If you go to TweetDeck, you just select the ones you want to do, push the button, and it's gone. But that's a very good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Google, go ahead. Okay. Uh, this particular one, I was just using this camera. Um, to do a video. To do screen captures, I use a couple of things. I use Screencast-O-Matic. It's screencast-o-matic.com. They've got a free version, which gives you 15 minutes. They've got a premium version, which costs about, I think it's $12 a year now, maybe $15 a year. Uh, Screencast-O-Matic. Is, is really easy to use. I'll tell you what, if you, if you come see me after the session, I'll be glad to show it, you know, share it with you. There's that one, and then, um, what is it? Uh, active. See, you got, me, you got me going, getting all sorts of stuff now. Cam Studio is a good one. Active Presenter is a good one. It's free. It is not time limited as far as how long your, your presentation can be, although anything more than about 15 minutes, you probably lost the student by that point. Um, it allows you to annotate, put arrows. The only drawback to this one is you have to have a place to put it, be it YouTube, be it Vimeo, or something like that. With Screencast-O-Matic, it has the ability to upload to their site, and then people can search and go like that. But again, it depends on, the, the, the groups that I'm working with, 
Some can get to YouTube, some can get to Vimeo, some can get to Screencast-O-Matic because of the filtering and all. Uh, all these things are very, very simple to use. Cam Studio is another good program. It's a little bit older, so it doesn't have necessarily the ability to zoom in on the screen like Camtasia would. But with, uh, with Screencast-O-Matic, you can actually have a camera in the corner so they can see you while you're presenting. And you can zoom in and zoom out, and it'll show where the mouse is when you click in different things. Another good option is uh, for tablets, there are a lot of whiteboarding applications. Right. You can record your voice and your writing on the tablet, and it's like a big turn your tablet into a whiteboard, and it makes it make what you write and talk about. Correct. The creations is one yeah, I've seen, I've seen one for the iPad. Edge creations. And uh, they're quite nice. Right. I, I have not focused, uh, for this session, I have not focused on a lot of the, the applications like that. But if we need to, we can. But thank you for sharing that. What's your name, ma'am? Janie. Janie. Janie said, what about Jing? How many of you are familiar with Jing? Jing is a fine product from Camtasia. Jing limits your time. Uh, I don't know how it will be in Canvas. But we have seen some problems with Jing in Blackboard. And so that may or may not be, but it's another option. And any, actually, sir, what was your name? Me? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. McPherson. Dr. McPherson, uh, you know, I appreciate you sharing that because it's all about getting content because that's something you're going to share out in Twitter. That's, that, that's getting the media in social media, whatever it is, to get it out there whether it's the writing on the tablet like a whiteboard or whether it's going to a screencast or if it's doing a video. But thank you for that. I really wanted to, I don't, I don't, want, I don't want you to think I'm blowing you off. That's a good question. Any other questions on this? Okay, so, so far this side of the room is asking all the questions. Would you mind coming over here and pouring some water on these people and waking them up? <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned over here. Okay, the next thing is Vimeo. Vimeo.com is another site where you can upload videos that can then be used anywhere you need to. The good thing about Vimeo versus YouTube, you can password protect this one and therefore you can even make it invisible when people can or cannot see it. People can give you feedback on it, they can give you stars on it, you can see on which day who's done what. It will allow you to do high definition. They allow you 500 megs a week upload, no time limit, you can do one high definition video. It's a very good application and they've got a mobile app for that too. YouTube is still my video source of choice, but if you run into people who cannot access that, it's always nice. Or they have other, you know, we don't want this on YouTube where somebody can find it. You can see this one was something for uh, Viking Range. And they didn't want necessarily to get it out for the public to see, which is why I'm not going to show it to you. But, as you can see, it's listed as private. YouTube, you've got to hide it, then you've got to give them the link. If they don't have the link, they can't get in, different things. They're both very good. And again, they're both where you can go in and share them with social media. With, with Twitter or Facebook or whatnot. How many of you have used or heard of Vimeo? Okay. Okay, I'm going to make y'all get up and sit over here because I see two hands over here. And one of them is Chris, and I paid him off this morning to raise his hand. Maybe we need to move some of this proof on this side. Well, somebody got to do something here because you know, either that or y'all see this candy that was on your desk? I got some to throw at you. <laughs> So if you see something flying through the air, you better raise your hand real quick and say, it wasn't me. But that's Vimeo, and it's a very good thing to use. Now, another one is Telly. Telly.com is Twitter's video feed. And again, you just simply Add a video to Telly. You create your account with your, with your Twitter account. You can do it from a mobile device or you can do it from your phone right here, from your computer right here. 
it's no different because you can view it. Try to trick some dentists into thinking they're, I'm one of their patients. Or maybe some other stuff, I don't know. <laughs> you know, again, it's just something you can do with your cell phone a whole lot easier. Um, if you're out here right now, I could just simply take my phone, do a video, push the button and upload it and it goes to telly. It would automatically be tweeted out, hey, I just put something up on telly. And then, boom, it's out there. You have no control over that other than you can delete it later on. This one, you can see it came and is linked from YouTube. There's the Harlem Shake. How many of you are familiar with the Harlem Shake? Who wants to do the Harlem Shake? If you do, go out there and do it. I have seen enough of it to know that I have seen enough of it. Uh, I don't understand it. Maybe I'm just too old. But, you know, it's just, it's just insane for, for 56 seconds of whatever it is. You go nuts. But again, with this, it's automatically tweeted out. You can see that it is linked to my Twitter account. If you've got multiple Twitter accounts, you're going to have to keep going in and out of that. Now, does anybody know why I say multiple Twitter accounts? Who has multiple Twitter accounts? Celeste, why do you have multiple Twitter accounts and what are they? <coughs> Okay, for those who can't hear Celeste, because she's soft-spoken, she's got a personal account, and then she's got a professional account. Why do you have a personal account and a professional account? Because what I tweet personally is not something necessarily my professional contacts need to see. And that is, that is exactly right on the point, as far as I'm concerned. The people I follow on Twitter, I don't want to be their friends. I've got enough friends. I want to be your colleague. I want to know what you have to offer to me professionally, okay? I don't care when Celeste is doing her dancing lights at Christmas, because I missed them this year anyway. Then that is very good information. But you want to make sure that you separate your personal from your professional. Okay, that's why you have multiple Twitter accounts. I've actually got three. I've got one for my personal stuff, for baseball. I've got one for my professional stuff, which is Web 2.0 tools and social media and things like that. I've got one for Blackboard tech support. So that when the system goes down, I can send out a Twitter account, a tweet, a tweet to them and say, hey, it's down. So I said, well, look, why do you have to do that? Why can't you just you know, send them out a message on the system? I just walked off, but you know, that's, so that's, that's where all these, these are just various different things that you still can get your video out with. Also with YouTube, you can put audio up there, so if you want to put an audio podcast, you could do that. Anything that can be, yes sir? I have a question, I'm sorry to interrupt, I have a question about multiple accounts. Okay. Uh, so I've thought about setting up separate Twitter feeds for each of my classes, and then I've thought about separate Twitter feeds for each of my classes. What I would like to do is, like, with, if you have like a Blackboard class, you can export it and reschedule it so that things show up at the right time. I'm wondering if it's something that's like possible to do that with a Twitter feed. It's a good question. If you have a single Twitter feed, but you have multiple classes you want to send information to, that's where you would use a hashtag. The hashtag would be like whatever your course ID is. Again, you want to keep it short because you've got that 140 character limit right there. But what you can do is you can put in, uh, remember to bring uh, examples of such and such to class today, hashtag um, RD483. And then you can have your students create, like in, in TweetDeck, they can look for and have a, a column just for anything that has that hashtag. You can also tie that in with a product called Selly. And by having your singular Twitter account and multiple hashtags, you can have different cells that will send out text messages to your students. 
So if they don't get it on Twitter, they can get it on their cell phone. And we'll talk about selling in just a few minutes. That's how I do a lot of things with uh, up in Starkville, when I was starting to play around with Selly, people were saying, I'd like to know what, you know, if we've got a, uh, any kind of severe weather warning in Starkville. On Twitter, it just zips down the line. You may or may not see it. So we set one up, and then somebody said, well, I'd really like to get one in Webster County because I've got some friends over there, and, you know, I'd like to make sure that they're okay. And I'd like to know when they've got some kind of bad weather warning. So all I did was, by using that Twitter account, a specific Twitter account, I then had a specific hashtag and as long as it came in with this, this Twitter account with this hashtag, it would go out to the people that were following Webster County. The people in Octibaha County did not get it. I had another one that followed the same account with a different hashtag for Octibaha County. They got it and the people in Webster County did. So that's how, you would, that's how I would recommend doing your classes is that hashtag because it can direct traffic anywhere you need it to go. Does that answer your question? Okay, be sure to look, I'll be here the rest of the day and tomorrow until 11 a.m., which time I'm booking. But that's a very good question. Will somebody over here ask me a question, please? Just somebody. Loran, ask me a question. There's, there's, there, there's a question. This one's like, question, what is that? I don't understand. Thank you very much, though. Uh, 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 I caught it. Let's see if she can. Okay, we're back at you. Okay. Any questions so far? Y'all been asking some good questions. Okay, TwitPic. TwitPic is just another site that you can send your pictures up to via Twitter. What TwitPic does, who just has a flip phone with a camera on it? Okay, you take a picture. If you took a picture and had a TwitPic account, all you would have to do is email it. You got email on that, right? Text message. I do everything for it. <sighs> Go to the back of the room. <laughs> take some time out in the corner there. What you can do is you can take a picture and then you can just email it to an account an address here at TwitPic and it goes up and is announced on Twitter. So you don't have to have a smartphone to get content out there. A lot of people say, well, I just have this phone right here. Well, that's okay. I've got this phone right here. Well, it's not here now. So, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. But TwitPic is a very simple one to use. Also, in some of these clients like TweetDeck, and I used to, I, I'm, I'm using TweetDeck here because I use TweetDeck. There's also Hootsuite and two or three others that are very fine products, you know. Uh, Y-O-O-N-O-O -O -O is, is another good client. You need to find the tool that fits your needs. TweetDeck fits my needs because I've got multiple accounts that I like to send out things to all over the place, as well as LinkedIn, as well as Facebook. <laughs> I can have multiple columns Hootsuite has some limitations I have found, personally. You know has some uh, limitations I have found. That doesn't mean they are bad products. It means that Craig Jackson does not use them. But I would be glad to help you if you had questions about them, okay? But that's how you can just send things up anytime. And you can see multiple pictures. And again, who, uh, Dr. McPherson, you were the one asking about the leading pictures, right? You were the one asking about the leading pictures? Okay, I tweeted this one up. Uh, this was at a session I did. I don't know why we got that picture, but it's gone. Now you see right there. Are you sure it cannot be undone? Okay, how many on this side say I should delete it? I'm going to make y'all get into this. One, you have been grinning all day. Raise your hand. We're going to delete it, and it's gone. Okay? <laughs> I'm afraid if I did that, they'd be throwing stuff at me, and I'm just, I'm too old to be moving that fast today. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Could somebody take a screenshot of that when you were talking about um, whatever ago? I mean, yes, they can. Same thing with this is what you were talking about a few minutes ago. The question is, and I'm repeating the question for the 
viewing audience. The question is, can somebody take a screenshot of a picture here that's up on TwitPic, just like they could on something with Snapchat? The answer is yes. Now, the reason I am not concerned about somebody screencasting, you're screensh uh, screenshotting this, this is out for the whole world to see. I'm not going to be quite so tempted to send a tawdry picture or take a picture at a bar or something and say, hey, look at this and have it get up. I'm trying to send it to my friend somewhere. One second. Yes, sir. Well, also, with this, it's more you control it. So you take it down when you're ready. With the other application you were talking about before, I was uh, watching the other day and there was also, there's controversy on it that if you read the fine print, it doesn't necessarily delete it. Some of them are still on there from weeks ago. And that's a very good point. If you read the fine print on Snapchat, uh, the stuff may or may not be deleted. And so, how many of you guys read the fine print? See, if you read the fine print on this thing, when you come to this class this morning, you were seeing you had to participate. This side saw it. Yes, ma'am, your question. Well, I was just going to say, Snapchat advertised that you couldn't take a screen capture, but you can. So they were, it was almost like they were promoting this send a naughty picture and no one can do it, but. Vine had the same problem. Uh, Vine is the Apple app that you could do like a six second video and people were doing inappropriate content and putting it up online and people were able to find it very, very easily. So they had to go in and change that. So, you, but you're right, I mean, but I can tell you this, when you're talking about, they say people can't screen capture something, I don't believe it. But the team, yeah, exactly. Dr. McPherson made a very good point. You take your cell phone, snap a picture of it. I cannot tell you the number of Twitter feeds that I have seen with a picture that somebody has done something at a ball game or something. They flip somebody off or whatever, and they'll take a picture of it, of their TV, and post that. So nothing is impossible. It may be a little more difficult, but that's still a good point. You know, we, what we've got to do, you're educators. You've got to educate your students on the proper and ethical way to use the web and to use the tools. If you shut them out and just say you can't use it while you're here, when they get out in the real world, it's going to be pretty ugly. We're going to have people who are losing jobs because they're doing things and seeing things and showing things they shouldn't show. But that's a very good point. Thank you very much, both of you. Any other questions or comments, thoughts? I'm just stopping so I can catch my breath. I also figured you all pretty tired of hearing me talk all this time. Okay, Flickr Creative Commons. How many of you are familiar with Flickr? Flickr is just a, an online photo repository where you can put your own stuff. It's like uh, Google Picasso Web and things like that. You can put your pictures up. Flickr has a specific location where you can go in and get Creative Commons licensed images that you can use. How many of you know what Creative Commons is? Uh, Y'all can raise your hand over here. There we go. How many of you know what copyright infringement is? Okay. How many of you look good in stripes? Let's see if I can find it again. I got lost. There it goes. Creative Commons allows you to legally use images videos, audios, or written passages as long as you meet certain criteria. It may be non-commercial, it may be no derivative works. Whoa, got my shock. You may have to share it alike, and you may have to say who did it. You may just have to just attribute it to somebody. But then you can use this for whatever you would like. I had a friend who has an online marketing business and somebody was building a website for him 
and he went out, the guy went out and found a picture of a dolly with some stuff on it. It was just uh, really a, a filler picture. Pops it up there, looks good. A couple of months later, my buddy gets a letter, says, Dear Mr. So-and-so, we are pleased that you liked our image enough to use it in your website. Give us $600. So he took it down. A few weeks later, Dear Mr. So-and-so, we're sorry you don't like our picture now as much as you did. Send us $600. Okay? They got their money. There are a lot of content out there that you can use very, very easily using the Creative Commons search to enhance your Twitter feeds. If you're talking about something in the culinary department at your school, you can find something here that may be culinary. That's better than you could get. It's, it's not exactly accuracy and marketing, but then again, if you ever seen a Big Mac commercial, it makes it look pretty good. And then you get it and you're wondering which store it came from. So you can use it to kind of get people interested in your, in your program, okay? All you have to do is when you find a picture, you can find the link, and then at the bottom, it will say your license, some rights reserved. And if you click on that, no derivative works, and you must attribute it. So it tells you what you have to do in order to use this picture. With the creative, uh, okay, when you say filter, in what manner? Um, as far as um, what you can and cannot do, like say you just want to use an image that they give you full rights to. Okay. Go in and say, the, question, the question is, on a Creative Commons search, can you specify what you want to do? With Flickr, no. You just have to kind of go and see what they've got. However, you can go to creativecommons.org and specifically put what you're looking for and what rights you want. You can also go to Google. And when you do a Google search, um, Beau Rivage, because we're here, I can go to the images and these are all the pictures. Oh, this is a nice one. I want to use it. But what we want to do is come over here to the advanced search. And down here at the bottom, you see where it says usage rights. You click on the down arrow right here. Now you've got free to use, free to use and share, free to use commercially, free to use or share. So, how many of y'all want to pay for a picture of the Beau Rivage? Okay. How many want to share it and maybe, maybe sell a picture of it? I do. I'm all for making money. So, I'm going to say, I'm going to share and even use it commercially. And now when I search for it, all of these now give me the ability to be, I can use any of these and put them up and even sell them. What I do, and that's a good question. The question is, what if you use a picture that says it's Creative Commons, li Creative Commons licensed and you sell it? What I do, I screenshot the page with the information. I bookmark the page with the information. And so I've got that then in case somebody comes back and says, hey, you use my picture. Another thing I do when I take my pictures I put a copyright on the bottom of it that's got my name on it. I also go into the EXIF information on my camera and put my name and copyright information. And then using Picasa as my photo editor and, and, and things, I'll go in and put my information again, photography by such and such, and put that in one of the tags that's uploaded with it. So I've got a lot of different ways to protect myself. But like I said, most of the, if I'm looking for a picture like this, I'm going to try to find out where it's from, what the license is for, save that page as a bookmark, take a screenshot of that page, and put it in the same area so I can keep it. I don't like to go to jail. Yes, ma'am. 
since you're so well knowledgeable about this, what if somebody takes a picture with their phone of your image that is copyrighted? Do you know it's illegal. Okay. It's illegal. I mean, if they take a picture of it and you find it. Because they reposted it or something. Well, it's like, um, I go to the College World Series. I'm fortunate enough to get a press pass and, and work at the photography pit. Opening ceremonies, they have a long fireworks display at the end of it. And they play all sorts of music to it, all sorts of popular music. Well, one time I did that. It was actually the first year at the new stadium. And I, you know, just background noise. Put it up on YouTube. There, Mr. Jackson, some of your content appears to be copyrighted. You may need to take it down. So I said, dear Mr. YouTube, it was just in my ears. I, I, I couldn't do it. What am I going to do? Put my hand over the camera so they can't hear it? So there, there are things that they will watch for. But then I did, okay, Father, forgive me, I have sinned. I, I did a slideshow and I used Old Lang Syne the last year they had the, the games at Rosenblatt. I thought it was a Creative Commons licensed version. Apparently YouTube disagreed. And they said, your music cannot be played, or your video cannot be played in this country because it violates their copyright stuff. Now, what I will do on my website, I've found some good information on copyright laws and infringements and fair use in the classroom and things. I'll put that up because I was actually asked to tell somebody how to download a YouTube video so they can show it in their classroom because they don't have access to things. And you know, I will tell you this, I can share with you anything in the world, but I will also tell you this, speeding is illegal. Copyright infringement is illegal. You make the decision, okay? If you know it's wrong to, to, to speed, and you just accidentally put the speedometer at 85, and well, well, that's a choice you made. Likewise, if you go out and get something that's copyrighted, that's a choice you made. You're welcome. Any other questions? Copyright or anything? Any other questions about the search on Google or on um, Creative Commons on Flickr? Flickr Creative Commons. No? Okay, Instagram, we've pretty much covered that along with the others. Let me go ahead and show you the screen. <coughs> Basically, you can download it on your phone. You can download it on an Apple or an Android tablet or a phone. You take the picture it uploads it to their website. It's no different than TwitPic or, or some of the others. It's just that it's done right there in your phone. Have you, do you use Instagram? I don't. Have you used Instagram? You want to, you want to talk about it? I've, I've, I've just gotten I'm not really a big fan of it because people will come in and take a pretty nice picture and then they start putting all these wacky filters on it and they start cropping it, and you're going, what is this? <laughs> Have you found that to be the, the case? I mean, I <coughs> like some of the popping apps, because I like a lot of contrast in my, in my pictures, but yeah, they can get really good. <coughs> so I definitely agree. And there's no control over the um, limitations of how much pop or how, how subtle you can make the picture. So there's absolutely better apps. And, and Instagram is one of these, again, the demographic we're looking at. Probably 18 to 34. And they, yes ma'am, Celeste. Um, I have a preteen teenager. And 12, 13, 14 year olds who uh, maybe their parents have not let them on, well maybe even 10 year old parents who have not let them on Facebook, they are going to this Instagram found that out a little bit the hard way, but now I have an Instagram, Instagram account to monitor what my, my teenager is doing because she's not on Facebook. So there, it's more than a photo filtering tool. It's mm -hmm. very social media. Yeah, it's social media. They 
they can talk so it's with more, them. I just want to point out it's more than just mm -hmm. the filter because that's what I thought it was until my preteen yeah. got on. Well, thank you, Celeste. I mean, that's, again, I don't have kids, and so I'm not, and I'm not in the classroom. I'm, I'm tech support and system administrator, so I don't, you know, these are things that, that help me, and I hope it helps the class when you, the, the session when you hear how it can be used as more than just a way to make funky pictures. It's a way to monitor your, tra and that's, a, that's another thing that you can also use TweetDeck for, is you can go in and do searches and find what people are saying and if, if your kids have an account you can monitor that way but that's that's very good i appreciate that thank you any other thoughts going back quickly to your uh, question from your i guess your faculty member about taking the youtube video and maybe you know, showing it in class or whatever you normally just suggest to that person that maybe they make their own youtube video or like in our case we use films on demand i don't know if you guys have the films on demand. It's a service we pay for that we have to, we can use any of those in the class. The question is, do you recommend ripping off YouTube or other online videos or would you rather create them themselves or use something that you have, have access to legally? Obviously you don't want to, I'm sorry that's the tech support hotline and they just have to wait. But I got tired of hearing the buzz. Um, obviously, time is, 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 a, is a precious commodity. And you don't have time to go and create something. If you could create something that is specific to your school or your program, obviously do that because it's custom for you. If you have access to something like videos on demand, that's, that's fine too. TeacherTube is really, really great too. There are several others like TeacherTube. Uh, YouTube now has an educational site up. Our school has a Netflix account. Even we have right. And see, even with the Netflix account. Okay. This is Craig. Okay. I didn't, I'm not a lawyer and I didn't stay at the Holiday Express last night, so don't take this. I will send you the links to go and look at. But the fair use policies have changed so much from when I initially went to work 30 years ago. You know, used to, you could take a video and show the whole thing in your class and it was not a problem. Now, it's, it's, it's really, really, really confusing to understand what is and is not considered fair use. You could have a three hour video and show two hours and 59 minutes of it and it's fair use. You can have a 30 second video and show two seconds of it and you violated fair use. So there, I, 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 will, I will put that information up because it, it, it is, you know, I like to do my own screencasts and all because now it is something that my students would see or my end users would see. When I'm doing my Blackboard tech support, a lot of times I'm looking at things, I'll see things from different colleges all over the country. The interface is different. Their nomenclature is different. The way they've got things laid out is different. So it really doesn't help my people to see that. And so I will go in and create my own. But if you can find something that's out there, you know, by all means, use it. Just make sure that you either look good in stripes or that you're legal. But thank you for that question. Any other questions along these lines? Okay, Instagram, fun stuff. We'll call it the Celeste rule now. We'll use it to monitor people. Another thing about Instagram. Yes, ma'am. Um, a friend of mine recently got on there, and one of the things I just kind of accidentally found her. And I was like, oh, I know you were on Instagram. And she said, I thought it was just a filter until we made my pictures are out there. And they were hopefully out there. And um, unless you said it, it didn't come. Right. Instagram, the, the response was that Instagram puts you out there whether you know it or not, unless you go in and set, you know, change your settings. But again, they change their stuff from time to time and they don't really tell you. It's like you get your phone bill and you don't really realize it said, oh, by the way, we're charging you an extra $70 this month. And, you know, you have three minutes from the time you get this email to, to respond to it. So now, but that's a good, good comment. Thank you very much. 
We talked about, when you're doing media and social media, we've, we've looked at some videos, we've looked at pictures, audio. How many of you would love to have somebody call in and leave an audio testimonial about how you help them? I got one, and it's in the middle of the room. You, oh, I got one over here. Okay. For a minute there, I thought we were in trouble. I use a product called Google Voice, which is free. And I'm sure most of you are familiar with Google Voice, right? If you're not, it's an outstanding program where you can place calls anywhere in the continental United States for free. Okay? You can send text messages to any mobile user in the United States and receive them for free. You can also, like my cell phone was ringing, this was my RCU tech support hotline. I can link it to any phone that I would like to and make or receive calls from it. Now that's, that in itself is pretty cool. Uh, some folks at Southwest have used this tool to create their own line so now they can call from their desk with no long distance charges. What's really cool about this is somewhere Okay, I have a baseball site called leftfieldlounge.com. Anybody that's familiar with Mississippi State Baseball knows what the Left Field Lounge is. We just sit out there and watch, watch baseball and eat barbecue and have a good time. <coughs> People are always trying to contact me. I don't want them to have my phone number. I don't want them calling me. What I've got is I'm able to go in and put this widget at the bottom of my page. When I do that, I do where it says call me and it wants your name and your phone number. It's not recording or anything. It's just so that when it goes through I'll be able to see who it is. What it does then is it uses your landline or your cell phone to call my Google Voice account. Now I'm not going to answer that phone every time it calls on that one. I've got to sit and go direct to voicemail. You've got a capacity of four minutes per call to record that testimonial. Does it have to be cell phone or can it be a landline? It can be a landline. It can be a landline or a cell phone. The good thing about it is it's four minutes testimonial. You've got a phone number that called and hopefully the correct name. But then you can download that recording as an MP3 file. And then you can tweet that out or put it on Facebook or put it on LinkedIn or even put it on, okay, I'm going to say it, Pinterest. How many of you know about Pinterest and how many of you use it? Oh, thank you, Celeste. <laughs> she, she's really stretching big back there. Yes. You know what that is, though? What? That's fantasy football. <laughs> I'm sorry, we couldn't hear that comment from the back. <laughs> We're a little bit garbled, Houston. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, uh, I found out about Google Voice probably two years ago, and uh, I've used it to set up because you can go in and register a new phone number that's free. Mm -hmm. And so I've got a separate phone number that I use when I give out, you know, either meeting people, things like that. But it's not my personal number. I use it more of a business number. And then also, it took a while to work it out, but I've got my voicemail on my cell phone through the Google Voice thing. It'll pick up my voicemails, transcribe them to text, and send me a text message of that. And so if I can't get somewhere where I can listen to it, I get a text message when I get the voicemail and I know who it is. And all that. Correct. Thank you for that. So I had to call through Say or South and set things up. But it's also good to have, you know, for business purposes, to have a written record somewhere of that voice. And it transcribes fairly well. It's not like a person. Yeah, and that, you're 100% you're correct. Thank you for sharing that. Um, on the Google Voice, here is a message that this person left. And if I play the message. Uh, yes, this is Christy Burgess. I'm currently in the um, cool essentials class. And I have an email from Leanne Michelle Smith. And Thank you. 
Okay, so you can see it's pretty accurate, but there have been some times that I have gotten some messages and it's like, what was that person doing? Because I want some of it. Okay, you can also see the text messages that I've gotten here. And again, the good thing about this, this was somebody that got the wrong number. As you can see, I said this is a business line, but I've got a copy of it. Now, this number right here, yes, that's, that's my nickname, Babe, okay? Babe the Blue Ox. But what I can do is I can actually come down here and I can block that caller. Okay? What? Pardon me? I was just glad somebody said, yes, ma'am. Okay, five minutes. Oh, wow. We didn't get where we wanted to get to. A um, couple other things. I apologize for this. Uh, Photo Snack. Photo Snack is a program that will let you take lots of digital still images and create a slideshow that you can then send out. You can either embed it in your Twitter account, embed it in a Facebook account, embed it in a WordPress, or you can send it out to Twitter and they can link to it. Um, you can go in and put some voice on it prior to with, with a soundtrack. Now, if you want to do something, if you want to annotate and put voice, there's another program. There's another program I'd recommend. This one um, is just some basic shots that I had pulled up when I was showing somebody how to use this. It links to your Flickr account. Okay, it linked to your Flickr account, Google, Picasa, two or three others, Facebook, and different things. And then you can put this up. They've got several different uh, zooms and fades and all sorts of things. So again, visual you know, walkthrough of your school district and different things, absolutely free to use. They've also got one called Banner Snack, which allows you to create a rotator on your web page. Um, and close this one. If you reference back to that left field lounge site again, you'll see here I've got some sponsors that rotate through here, created free through snack, uh, snack websites, but it just rotates these images through. Okay, I'm sorry I did not get through all this. Uh, I know they're anxious to go. I know y'all are anxious to go. I can do that. There is Craig's, Craig's Tech Blog .wordpress .com. Uh, I've got a couple of Twitter accounts that you can follow. Craig Jackson is one. That's going to be my general one. And RCUBB Tech, which probably won't be of any interest. It's got my email and my phone number. I'll be around here the rest of the day if I can help you. Be glad. Thank you very much. Have a good day.